Hey, welcome back to Garden Rose. It's been a couple weeks since I last filled you in on what I've been doing, getting ready for my garden season. So I figured it was time for an update. I want to show you a couple things outside while I still have some daylight. So let's dive right in. Here's an update on the garlic. This was planted last fall and so now it's finally coming up. And I did fertilize it with some of that fish fertilizer that I made myself in the last video. So we'll see how it does. I'm hoping that it works really well, but it still looks great regardless. And then not too far away is my little raspberry patch. So I got two raspberry plants last year that were second year raspberries and I didn't really get much of anything from them. I definitely didn't get any raspberries, but they didn't really grow that much either. So I was so excited to see these little plants popping up that kind of spread out from the roots. So crossing my fingers that I might actually get a raspberry this year. So that's mostly it outdoors. There's a lot more exciting things happening indoors, but outside the last week or so have actually been really nice warm days. So I think that's helping everything grow nice and strong early on, like spring's already here, but within the next week, we're also supposed to get like freezing temps and I think it's even supposed to snow again. We'll see how long all of that lasts and hopefully it sticks through it. I might have to, um, bring, like I put my rosemary back outside. I might have to bring that back in this next week and I don't know, just keep an eye out once the freezing temps start coming again. But I have started some more things inside. I'm really excited to show you. I already mentioned some of the things I'm doing different this year compared to last year, which was my first year starting seeds and I'm already noticing huge differences. I really can't wait to show you this. So let's go right into it. Okay, I feel like I really don't even need to say much about these pepper seedlings. I think they speak for themselves. They are working on their second or third set for some of them. Oh, maybe just all second. First or second set of true leaves. So, so much better than last year. Last year, they all got to about this and then like stunted, completely stopped. And now they are rocking and rolling. This is the biggest one so far. So I'm very proud of these. I think they're looking great. And I'm going to have a whole bed dedicated to peppers this year. So I'm very excited to put each and every one of these, hoping that they continue to make it and they make it all the way outside. But every single one of these going in the garden. Right here, I recently planted some Black Eyed Susan and some petunias. So nothing has come up yet, but hopefully soon. The sweet potatoes are still looking about the same. They really haven't grown much at all. So I did just take a couple more slips off of here to put into my jar that is housing all of my sweet potato slips. So we'll see what we get from here. And I'll probably be getting rid of this soon just to make room for more seedlings because those pepper plants probably need to be up potted pretty soon but so that'll be going here's the onions these are the ruby red that really exploded and I'm tempted to trim the tops off just because they're all kind of a tangled mess up top but they're looking really good and the walla walla I don't know what happened I don't know if I did something wrong or I might just not have had as many seeds I know the seed packet had less than the ruby red so maybe that's the big difference but I got nervous so I went ahead and planted the Eliza Craig packet that I had too so those are a little bit behind which is why they're not as tall but they look like they will be caught up in no time And my newest additions here, I've got some golden beets and red beets. And these I did multi-sow and I'm hoping to put them in the garden as kind of like clusters rather than one single beet. And I just wanna try that out this year. So 
we'll see how that goes. It looks like only, you know, one of them have come up each here. So we'll see what we get from that. But these ones look really good. So yeah, going to try that a little bit different this year. And then I have my cabbage, which is also looking great, looking very festive for today being St. Patrick's Day. So um, yeah, excited to kind of get these going too. I've never grown cabbage before, so I'm excited for those. I'm already thinking about protecting these out in the garden. I just got some garden netting that we'll put over the cabbages when they go out because like I said this is my first time growing them so last year I grew Brussels sprouts and those got completely attacked by cabbage moths and worms and caterpillars and all the things so I'm gonna do the best I can to protect the cabbages from the Brussels sprout experience that I had last year. So stay tuned on that project. And then I have my tomatoes, which have just started to really come up. I planted these March 10th, so I feel like they came up quicker than I would have thought. But just some Romas, uh, Jersey Devil, Mortgage Lifter, Moneymaker, and then a few different cherry tomato varieties. So I tried to slim it down. Last year I tried a bunch of different varieties and I just didn't have a lot of success in general but this year I wanted to keep it kind of simple just a few different things and see how they did and they do look like they're stretching a little bit I've been playing around with the light you know trying to keep it close enough but not too close like those ones seem to not like it but these ones seem to be okay so I don't know I'm still playing around with the lighting situation but yeah looking good overall I am a little nervous because my tomato seedlings, that's what they looked like last year, and then they never grew past that little small seedling stage. So I'm hoping that they are like the peppers and they boost right past this and work on those true leaves and just keep growing, but we'll see. That's that's what I'm familiar with, that, that stage right there. That's what I saw last year, and they never changed. So. I'm going to keep a close eye out and make sure that they still are growing and that they're doing really good. But I mean, they popped up so fast. It's only been seven days. So that's more than I thought I'd see this early on. So I still have hope. I'm still loving what's going on here. And um, that's really all I have. I know it's just a quick update, but I don't want to leave you guys hanging because there's been so many cool things going on here. Oh, wait, I did have another update. This is my new best friend, Elsa, and we've been working together for a few weeks and we've been having a lot of fun. So I want to show you some of the things that I did just really quick and I'm sure in upcoming videos, maybe we'll do some freeze dried projects together. We've been talking about getting a freeze dryer for quite some time and finally decided to make the investment and see how it was going to help with fr like food preservation and um, just preserving everything that comes out of the garden this year because that was one of my biggest struggles last year was figuring out how to use everything that came out especially when it came out all at once if you followed along last year I think Swiss chard was the biggest thing that I just didn't know what to do with and now looking back it's like you know maybe I will grow that again because I think popping it in the freeze dryer and having it as you know just greens that I could sprinkle in dishes and soups and quiches. I mean, there's, I feel like now the possibilities are endless. So I'm very excited to see how the freeze dryer really changes the game this garden season and how we can make our harvest go even further. But for now, we're sticking with the fun things and just getting comfortable with it and seeing how it works. So ice cream, ice cream sandwiches, different flavors of ice cream and lots of candy. Tootsie Rolls, of course Skittles, you have to do Skittles. The Nerd Gummy Bites, Airheads, Sour Cherry Gummies. And I think that's it, everything else I've either eat, oh, Milk Duds and Gummy Worms. 
that's been a lot of fun. I've given a lot of the candy away to my family and it's been fun to kind of like try them out and, and see what everyone's favorites are. But that's been kind of like the fun things. And then I did get into, I did some snap peas, which have been a good little snack. Oh, it's hard to get these things to seal. Um, pear slices, apple slices, pineapple and cantaloupe, and avocado. I did try the avocado as like a snack just to like snack on an avocado slice and I did not like it that way. It was not the best form of an avocado but I did try rehydrating one and used it on like toast as avocado toast and that turned out really great. So these are going to come in handy just to like rehydrate and use. Um, and then my last batch, I did some celery and lemon slices just to have for like cooking. And um, yeah, that's really all I've done so far. I am loving using it. it. The cycles all take kind of different times. The candy obviously doesn't take that long. It's about like four hours for each batch, but the actual food that needs to be like freeze dried and like moisture taken out of, um, those have been anywhere from like 20 to 35-ish hours. So it takes some time, but it's been worth it so far and it's been really fun playing around with. So now that's officially all of my updates. If you have any recommendations on freeze dryer projects, send them my way, I'm all ears. I am really enjoying, you know, getting the hang of it and seeing how these things turn out. So if you know of anything good that I should freeze dry, give me your recommendations. That's a pair. We'll see you on the next one.